lifestyle designers. This is Zach Martin Kilgore here with Secrets of Longevity in Humans.com. Perhaps for me, one of the most disheartening uh, fallacies of our time is the misconception, the broad, all encompassing misconception that the public in general holds about the effect genes have on our health. From my experience, most people hold the belief that genes dictate their health. When we are born, we inherit a genetic template that dictates a variety of processes going on in our body. Um, so this, things like features and inherited traits come from our parents, from both sides of the family. Now, this does not mean that by the time we're in our 60s and we, some, if we happen to be someone who's developed diabetes or cancer, that this is because of genetics. Yes, there are genes that cause or predispose us to having certain illnesses that have run in the family, so to speak. But what this simply is, is that if we continue the lifestyle habits and factors that our family has done in the past to create these genetic abnormalities, then we are more likely to get this disease than someone else who doesn't have those genetic predispositions. So what I see a lot of people coming to is the belief or the, the, um, the use of this belief as a scapegoat to avoid making the lifestyle changes that are necessary for, or that we know, are what actually affect our health. One way that this has been proven, that lifestyle factors dictate our health, not our genes, with the exception of genetic disorders, of course. So certain genetic disorders, such as sickle cell blood anemia, um, are inherited traits that aren't necessarily affected by lifestyle habits like diet, exercise, uh, sunshine, uh, and mental attitude. But what we see in the majority of chronic diseases that are associated with lifestyle factors is that societies, or the longest lived societies, um, that have exceptional health well into their mature years, uh, don't have these diseases. They almost, it's almost, you never see these things like diabetes, cancer, heart disease. They just do not exist. Yet, when these same individuals, who apparently have incredibly good um, genetic profiles, come to North America, for example, and adopt a Western type of diet, or a SAD diet, this uh, standard American diet, they quickly, over a matter of years, develop the same problems that people in the West already have, so these diseases. So regulatory proteins are a sheath of proteins that encircle the uh, genetic material in all of the genes throughout our entire body, in every cell. Now, with this, this sheath acts like a barrier that opens and closes when triggered by environmental factors. So this, uh, this fact of the way the genes work was dismissed when uh, gene research first began a couple decades ago. But more recently the field of epigenics has uh, begun to take off, which is studying this, uh, these regulatory proteins which actually um, have more to do with how the genes work than was previously thought. So what these regulatory proteins have shown us is that environmental factors are able to turn, switch on and off which gen genes are read by the body or by the proteins in the cells that in turn cause signals to go outside of the cell to uh, affect changes in the body. So if you have inherited, for instance, uh, colon cancer in your family, um, and you apparently have that gene, if you're not engaging in the types of activities that would activate that gene, 
you're, you don't have the same likelihood of uh, getting colon cancer as the rest of your family. So these, this fear and propaganda by um, the media, by health authorities, is actually not doing you any good. And you need to let go of those false and limiting beliefs if you truly want to uh, attain your highest longevity potential. If you'd like to learn more about uh, this fairly complicated subject, I've written an article um, about this, which you can find a link to in the top right-hand info box there. And you can click that link and read the article on my website to find more in-depth information and a better explanation of this if you can't quite grasp the implications of it. And also I would suggest looking at or reading any books by Bruce Lipton who's a, a genetic biologist who well, is promoting the awareness of this uh, empowering research. So if we know that genes aren't implicit in the results we get in our health and we're not limited to the health of our ancestors and the health we can embody right now, then that frees us up to the possibility of longevity in ourselves even if our family members in the past have not had particularly long lifespans. So some people do hold on to the belief that you need to have had long-lived ancestors to live, say, to a hundred. Yet if we know that it's lifestyle factors and habits that we accumulate and adhere to on a day-to-day -day basis that truly make up and determine health, then we can decide to follow those and not be stuck into limited uh, boxed-in beliefs. If you happen to have had family members and ancestors who have lived exceptionally long lives, what this means is you're potentially able to get away with more in terms of bad habits and bad lifestyle choices. But this doesn't mean you should go about engaging in these practices. What many health authorities have been witnessing over the past years is a acceleration of the genetic breakdown or the, the uh, constitutional uh, fortitude in the general population. So what was considered healthy genes um, 40 years ago has actually been reducing due to negative lifestyle influences. So just because you have strong genetics from uh, having had long-lived ancestors, because of the way society has progressed, these genetic factors are weakening. And many younger people now face um, increased risk of, like I mentioned, these wide variety of diseases. So it is more important than ever that you embody and begin practicing a longevity lifestyle that accentuates those practices that fortify and build our foundational uh, energies. Dr. Brian Clement has been witnessing that there is one supplement, uh, one whole food, superfood supplement that actually helps build and fortify the constitution, which is the genetics. And this is Klamath Lake Algae, which is uh, often known as E3 Live, or uh, it's a type of blue-green algae that has many components in it that are, or phytochemicals that actually build and repair the genetic material in our bodies. And so by making this a part of our everyday lifestyle, we can uh, improve the our life expectancy as well as our overall health. And this is needed more than ever today in the genetic constitutions that are appearing in the average person.